please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, welcome back to the show. Well, let's focus on another uh, company now. Uh, globally, zinc prices have fallen further in the month of September. Reports suggest that zinc prices have slid to under $2,500 a ton. This comes as a big boost for companies like EverReady, which uses zinc as a crucial raw material. Amritanshu Khetan, the MD of EverReady India, joins us now to talk about that. Amritanshu, good morning. The last time when we spoke with you, zinc prices globally were at about $2,700, $2,800 a ton. Uh, I understand now that they've fallen to sub-2,500, but you tell us what are the zinc prices now and how much of an impact will it have on your own profitability and margins? Uh, good morning, Sonia. Uh, zinc has been hovering anywhere between $2,250 and $2,500, $2,550 last one week. Uh, the global uh, market turmoil with the dollar strengthening is putting pressure on the metal market. We think uh, that the zinc prices will remain under pressure and it should remain sub 2500 going forward in the remaining part of the year. Uh, this is a very big positive for the battery industry as a whole as 15% uh, of the revenue is 15% uh, I mean, is the zinc cost in the cost of sales. Uh, so that would boost margins in the second half of, of the current year. But part of that would get offset with the depreciating rupee. Mm -hmm. uh, the rupee impact is also being cushioned with the yuan devaluation. So compared to the past where companies in India, especially where there was imports, um, would be completely negatively impacted because of rupee devaluation. But because the Chinese currency is also devaluate, devaluating at a faster rate or at least at an equal rate, uh, you are seeing a net-net uh, neutral impact on the rupee devaluation till now. Okay. But, no, therefore, are you saying that the proverbial Chinese competition is not much now? No. What I am highlighting is that the raw materials which the company uses, not only for batteries but even for our lighting business, uh, if it is coming through imports, mm. uh, the rupee devaluation does not impact margins that significantly anymore mm. because the no, Chinese I got currency that. is also I got that, devaluating. Yeah, I got that, uh, Regarding Chinese yeah. imports, yeah, yeah, yeah. Regarding Chinese imports, they still remain to be pretty high for the battery industry. Because of that, we expect the uh, volumes in the first half of the year to be flat. But Bureau of Indian Standards is becoming mandatory in the next 15 days. We believe that uh, this will have a very big impact on imports coming in from China because uh, once BIS becomes mandatory, the poor quality Chinese batteries will find it very difficult to enter the country. So I expect a big boost in terms of volumes, mm. which should come in in the second half or in the first half of next year. Okay, so when you say big boost in terms of volumes, what are you looking at uh, in an, on an overall revenue growth and margin performance? I mean, if zinc prices continue to be this low, uh, do you think your margins could be 10% plus by the end of FY19? And what are you looking at in terms of revenue growth? Uh, on the battery business, we should clock uh, EBITDA margin uh, higher than about 15% for the full year. Uh, but we have investments going in into appliances, which is negative. So for a company as a whole, uh, we are looking at EBITDA growing by about 40%, 35 to 40% for the full year. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding top line growth, we are looking at a 10 to 12% kind of top line growth. Okay. For and the year. Okay. Can you give us a little more color or shed more light on your lighting and LED segment? The lighting business is pretty stable. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, the revenue growth uh, per se would be a bit lower because of the price correction taking place in the bulb segment. Mm. But margins are still uh, pretty healthy for the company because we have now entered into the higher value luminaire segment in the last six months. This is aiding to margins being stable. Okay. So we are looking at a 10% kind of 9 to 10% kind of EBITDA margin for lighting for the full year okay. with a growth of about 15 to 20 percent on the top line 
Thanks for okay, Amrit Anshu, all the best. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so that's actually a big fall in the raw material costs for uh, Ever Ready. Uh, it'll boost their margins quite a bit, and they're expecting, in fact, 15% margins in the battery business alone uh, by the end of the year. We'll take a short break on that note, but the latest commodity trades coming up uh, with Manisha Gupta, commodities editor, on the other side. Care Ratings, celebrating 25 years of analytical excellence. कल को बना रही हैं कल्पनाएं और स्टील टाटा स्टील वी आल्सो मेक टुमारो पैशन की पतंग को स्टार्टअप की डोर मिले तो सेट हो जाए मामला बजाज अलियंस लाइफ गोल प्लान के एक्सपीरियंस्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट मैनेजमेंट का साथ हो तो आप बस लाइफ गोल प्लान करो बजाज अलियंस लाइफ डॉट कॉम आरोप लॉग ऑन करो या हमारे इंश्योरेंस कंसल्टेंट ऐसी बात करो और बाकी समझो हो गया सर्च इंजन पर जो अग्रवाल पैकर्स एंड मूवर्स लिमिटेड मेरे इस चेहरे के साथ नजर न आए वो असली नहीं है याद रखेगा यही है अश्योरेंस अग्रवाल पैकर्स एंड मूवर्स लिमिटेड नौ तीन सौ तीन सौ तीन सौ रेखा दी थोड़ी शक रेखा दी नहा रही है पर मैं हूँ ना हल्दी हल्दी जिन दागों को आप नजरअंदाज करते हैं दूसरों को सबसे पहले वही नजर आते हैं इसलिए बहुत जैसी क्लीन पेंट नो दाग नो धब्बा ओनली ब्यूटीफुल वॉल्स Welcome back. As promised, Manisha Gupta is here to line up the early commodity trends. Good morning, Manisha, again. Morning, Lata. Thank you so much for that. Well, we have seen the crude oil prices steady yet again. Actually, if you look at this week, this month, this quarter, we are ending on a higher side when it comes to the crude oil prices. Third weekly gain and fifth quarterly gain is what the crude oil prices really are looking at on the charts. Well, you have seen a short-term supply squeeze coming into the markets that has been supportive. Apart from the OPEC and Russia saying that they will not increase production by too much, you also have seen further decline in supplies from Venezuela and the Iran sanction concerns of course continue to rule the market and that is where you have seen the support coming in from slightly off the highs but we still are holding around those four year highs in the global markets for the brand prices and yet another 3/10% of gains for the mcx prices is how we have open trade here well the strength in us dollar of course is putting pressure on many of those metal prices so you have gold prices trading at a six week lows in the international markets that's exactly what the indian prices are mirroring here but it is the base metal prices strength which seems to be giving some impetus for the silver investors to come in and buy on to that one in any case we have been holding around that 37000 mark for the silver prices in india for the last couple of months or so so that seems to be steadying on the charts here at least the base metal prices have a lot of factors to look at one of course it is the us dollar the second quarter gdp numbers in the us coming in at the fastest pace in four years of course has been supportive apart from that there also is china saying or reiterating that they are not looking to put a numbers on how much output cut should be given by provinces as the winter approaches to curb pollution so that's yet another thing that's made the situation slightly fluid and we have seen some bargain buying come in on the lower side many of the metals in shanghai and alumia are trading nearly half a percent to 1% on the higher side and that's exactly what we have seen happen here as well last night wasn't so good because you saw copper and aluminum prices decline to a one week lows but that clearly seems to be getting bought into in the asian markets right now trading strategies and we have them from grow value they have a buy calls couple of for couple of commodities in case of copper they're looking at an upside target of 464 and a buy call in crude oil prices continues with targets of 5380 for the day today okay, okay thanks a lot for that manisha 
uh, well, uh, uh, in the uh, equity markets, there seems to be a little bit of uh, uh, stability as far as the Sensex and the Nifty are concerned. Uh, 10,930 on the Nifty is proving to be a bit of a support as of morning trades, but uh, we are not noticing the kind of falls that we're seeing in the small cap index. It's down 2.5% now. Nifty small cap 100 is what I'm talking about. Down 2.5% now and down 8.5% for the week. And uh, for the month, it is down about 17.5%. Yeah, so there's much more destruction of value at the small cap level. Absolutely. <coughs> and you know, a lot of these white goods companies that sold off yesterday continue to fall today. So keep an eye out on that space. Whirlpool is down another 5%. Uh, many of those on the back of the tariffs, uh, huge volumes on Whirlpool and auto stocks continue to fall. TVS Motors, the latest casualty, down almost about 4 odd percent or so. So not looking good for the market. By the way, a statement coming in from Infibeam, no pending information or announcement that ca can have a bearing on the stock price. Of course, margin calls are getting triggered on Infibeam and that's the reason for the big fall, 53% down now. But with that, its curtains down on Bazaar. It's been a very hectic and volatile start to trade. All the trading ideas lined up on our next show, which is Chartmasters. Thanks for watching.